This product is used for detecting and direction finding 802.11 aka Wi-Fi compatible devices. Maybe you could share with us a, a little bit of background. First, how do you envision the typical user operating this product? And maybe you could even just talk about some common scenarios where they might use it, Mike. The core feature set starts with the user doing a broad scan for any device in the local area with an omnidirectional antenna. After going through and locating all of the devices in the area using this scan feature, you can then determine by hiding the devices that are authorized, which ones are therefore unauthorized. So then you'll just have a list of all the ones that you don't really know what they are. So you can go ahead and select one of them on the scan list. That'll bring open the direction finding screen. You can, so you can switch out to a directional antenna, mm. and then you can use the device to go ahead and track down that unauthorized device. And therefore, if you see a new MAC address pop up that you can't track down to be associated with an authorized corporate device, you can conclusively determine something funky might be going on. Mm. And then you can go and use the direction finding feature to locate where that device might be. And if you suddenly see a guy walking in with a Raspberry Pi with an expensive looking Wi-Fi dongle on it, you can go and have a chat with Is him. there any one particular feature or innovation that you're developing that maybe you're kind of proud of or excited about taking to the next level? Yeah, I think the one feature that I would really like to call out here is active ping. We send out a specially formatted 802.11 frame, which, for lack of a better term, wakes up the target client device and causes it to transmit a reply. Now, we send these active pings at a rapid rate, and that allows us to have the amount of traffic going back and forth that we can have high-resolution direction finding even on clients, not just on access points. When you're developing custom firmware for a mission-critical tool like the Yellow Jacket Ultra, how do you find that balance between performance, reliability, security? There's so many balls that you're juggling. With a recent update, for instance, I was able to increase the device's update rate by a factor of approximately 12x just by going through redesigning things, optimizing, etc. Obviously, reliability is of the utmost concern with anything that's going to be used in an industrial and especially a security application. You need to have it always ready to go. You can't just have it rebooting or crashing or anything like that because that destroys trust. You have to have it work 100% of the time. And the way we do that is we test it vigorously and we make sure we have independent testing by third parties. Instead of using an SD card, we instead use an internal unremovable memory chip. And now it's completely impossible to use a Yellow Jacket Ultra for data exfiltration. Another security concern was the USB port on the outside of the unit, which we use for charging and software updates. To mitigate that risk, first of all, it doesn't act like a flash drive. When you plug it into a PC, unless you have our specialized software installed on that PC, the PC doesn't even know what to do with it. It'll sit there doing nothing. And even if you do have our specialized software, it doesn't act like a flash drive. And in addition to that, there's a switch on the unit that can physically disconnect the data lines of the USB port. And then it is electrically impossible for it to do anything other than charge. I think the feedback from the customers is always pivotal in our product, especially with security. So we really look forward to now taking this product to the next step, putting it to a couple key customers, and we welcome that feedback, and then we can continually improve and enhance the security. So really, thanks for all your efforts in Absolutely. designing this and we'll look forward to seeing you in the field.